All right, Thanks. it's time now to welcome in crime analyst Lisa Lockwood here, who is here to discuss all of this. Thank you so much for joining us, Lisa. Lisa, it's day one of this trial. What sense are you getting of how they're trying to paint this picture of Amber Heard right now with the sister of Johnny Depp taking the stand? Well, with the sister, her making that incredible point of saying that they needed to have a separate hotel room on the ready when they traveled so that Johnny can extract himself from their relationship in case things got volatile. So what that says is that Amber was the aggressor. And that's an important point to bring forward because it is a he said, she said. Johnny was never charged with domestic violence. He was never arrested for domestic battery. She was never arrested and charged with it. So all we have right now is the complete dependence on the people who are in their inner circle. What they are saying, what they witnessed, and what behaviors were different in the relationship with Amber and his previous wife. And I think it's interesting to ask this question because it's so early here. But, you know, for viewers at home and, and for us who are wondering, why do you think Johnny Depp is suing for $50 million and then Heard is countersuing for $100 million? Does this seem all a bit outrageous? Well, it does. It really does. And I do question all of it because we've got the divorce, which was incredibly public and ugly. Things had come forward in that divorce that really harmed both of them. Then we have the separate lawsuit with the Washington Post and the op-ed, and that put him in a very bad and negative light. So what does it come down to now? It comes down to both of them and their loss of income based on all of the negativity that came forward by choices that they made regarding the suing and the counter suing from 50 million to 100 million. So I think it's a power move on Johnny's part because he wants to clear his name because of what was said. And then also on Amber's because now she's part of the ACLU, she's part of the Me Too movement, and it needs to be, uh, she needs to continue with that platform to stand up for women if she intends on being congruent with what happened, happened to her. Definitely a lot of eyes on this trial as it continues to unfold. We're going to take a short break over here, but when we return, we have plenty of more of the Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp trial. Stay with us. You are watching the Law and Crime Trial Network. All right, it's now time to welcome back our crime analyst, Lisa Lockwood, again. Lisa, this case is about the Washington Post op-ed, but do you think the parts Benjamin Chu highlighted are worth going to trial for, especially since Heard didn't even mention Depp's name. I think he made a clear point. It did not need mentioning because we know when the divorce was taking place and we know what was publicized in the media prior to that because everything was starting to come out. Johnny Depp was leaking information and audio tapes that he had behind the scenes where he was recording Amber talking about her hitting him and him being weak because he would retreat all, the, all of the time. Um, so he, he would fight back. It, it was back and forth. We have two people who were uh, co-combatants in these scenarios. So yes, you did not need to name Johnny Depp to know that two years ago, all of this salacious information was being leaked to the public, talked about in the public, in media, uh, across the board, in magazines in, and in uh, news stations. All right, we're going to go back now and hear more from Benjamin Chu's opening statement. Take a listen. So, Lisa, I don't know how much you follow Johnny Depp, but does it seem like these allegations are indeed hurting his career? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, we know that at least one of his movies was not able to come through fruition, and that was part of the Pirates of the Car Caribbean franchise. So another movie was supposed to be made, and obviously they had to pull it back because it was in the midst of all of this happening, and nobody wants to invest money in somebody who has a case or an accusation of any kind of uh, domestic battery, sexual violence, anything that's going to hurt uh, the movie revenue. So we know that that happened. As far as anything else, he would have to be able to prove that he had a steady stream of, of work outside of one that was canceled, and all of a sudden, based on these allegations, he lost work. So I think that would be provable. Now, does it matter if the attorney says that no one else but Amber Heard has complained about Johnny Depp's abuse? I mean, he keeps repeating that no one in 50 years, you know, has said anything about Johnny Depp. 
No, it only takes one time. Somebody could snap and that's what happens. We've seen that with domestic violence situations where somebody is murdered. And hey, they were great up until that moment. They have plenty of television shows uh, talking about these extreme circumstances that causes somebody to act out in a way that they never have before. So not having a history of it doesn't mean anything. It's that moment, it's isolated, and that's what you base your focus on. Well, do you think with those opening statements, you know, it's starting off on the wrong foot for him? I think you have to take all of them separately, all of those points. So I think they made some good points, the last one being the potential of a blackmail extortion type thing when they said, if you don't come forward with this money uh, as far as part of the divorce settlement, we are going to go and file for a restraining order. And they went ahead and did that when Johnny refused. So why Johnny didn't bring up that situation when they have proof and documentation that he was asked to uh, agree to certain monetary uh, terms and he decided not to do that, three days, days later, they did exactly that. They went to court, had paparazzi there, and started to file the claims for the restraining order for sexual, uh, I'm sorry, for domestic violence. There are certainly so many fascinating facets to this case. And it's time now for us to take a quick break. There is so much more trial coverage ahead here on the Law and Crime Network. We'll eventually go back live to the Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp case. So stay with us. We'll be right back.